Okay, guys, here we are. We have a piece of burl. Um, she has very interesting voids in her. So we are going to use some epoxy with this piece. Um, she's got beautiful characteristics in the wood. Okay, I am going to go with a betta. Or it is a color shift. We'll see. I'm probably going to use all of it. Yeah, let's just use all of it. Let's see if I like it. It may not be strong enough after I get to mixing it up. I should have went with the green. We're going to put some tamarind in it also, which is also another color shift. Let me... We're going to dump all of this in there. Kind of similar colors. Let's go ahead and pour this over and see where I'm at on my measurement. Whoa, lady. Chill your fill. And take a bit for it to go down inside of it. All right. I am going to put her in the pressure pot because she'll get too full for me to mess with. I'll let her try to wick down in there some more before I put anything on top of her. Alright guys, here we are on the lathe. We've got it mounted between centers. Um, I had one of my uh, viewers um, suggest that I let you guys know what kind of tools I'm using. So we're going to have a little quick tool talk. Um, let me show you the carbide tools that I will be using on this piece. Um, the, this is a round and this is a diamond point. The round I'll be using to knock off some of the excess epoxy and help with some of the shaping. Um, the diamond point I usually only use if I'm making a detailed point, but primarily to make a tenon or a mortise to get the right angle to make sure I'm going to have the right angle to hold it in my chuck. Um, so these are the two primary, at least on the outside. I do bring in um, my Easy Wood, um, number one hollower for the inside and um, you know this has a cutter on it that is a lot smaller of course than the big one. One of my other favorite tools this one is the David Ellsworth it's a half inch and it's got the swept back grind on it. Um, it is something you'll see me use a lot even a lot of people will stick strictly with carbide with epoxy and, and carbide does work really well with epoxy but you can make your bowl gouges work with epoxy too just depending on you know how you use them you'll see me doing a lot of shear scraping with it and once I get into the wood and not as much epoxy I can move a lot more material if I'm going to be doing a lot of shaping um, you do, if you get it tipped wrong, you're going to get some breakout on your epoxy, but, um, you know, I've been doing it long enough. I don't have as much trouble with that, but I still do occasionally. Anyway, this is one of my favorite tools to use with turning. You'll see me use this quite a bit today. And then I have a 
Robert Sorby that is also a half inch and it's got the um, fingernail grind on it and I'll bring it in and use it sometimes you know I just something just isn't working right with my David Ellsworth and I go to this one sometimes it's just a matter of changing tools if something isn't working quite right but and then I also will be potentially using it's a Robert Sorby also um, parting tool and I'm not married to Robert Sorby I don't have to just have Robert Sorby tools I have several different other kinds of tools but these this one actually and these two actually came with my used lathe so it's what you get used to sometimes um, anyway just kind of wanted to give you some info on what kind of tools Okay, let me talk a little bit about the shape I had originally wanted to do was to bring her down quite dramatic here and then make this more rounded at this point but bring her down pretty dramatic. My concern is, uh, you know, making sure I'm not going to waste where I've put the epoxy. The epoxy wasn't just put in there to um, fill in voids. It was supposed to help make some interest in where the voids were. So if I want to bring it down quite dramatic, I have to think about am I going to lose the interest here and just end up turning away that whole void there um, and potentially this one here which looks like would possibly happen I I did go back and look at the video to see how deep they kind of went to see how I could potentially turn it down now this is where a turner like me sometimes is dictated by not necessarily what shape I would like to go for but what shape the piece after it's been poured and I've knocked everything back on what I can do I had thought about bringing this part down leaving this at the top and this at the top but when you consider the rim of the bowl is only going to be here so I will just have that shape and that shape which kind of bodes well for here but if I go bring this in at that dramatic slope like I'd wanted pretty sure I'll lose most of this 
and the spot up on top was fairly shallow so I don't believe I think I would lose absolutely this and this for sure so then I would just have that little strip so I have to potentially try to bring it down this way I believe so I'm going to get back at this I'm going to start bringing this corner down uh, hopefully I'm making the right decisions. <sighs> Nerves of steel. going to use the medium thick black CA by Starbond and the accelerator. I will probably have to do, I think this is going to be pretty deep so let it go in there and set and spray some more. you end up using so much CA sometimes it takes so long for it to to cure stop the madness lady alright save some CA glue them for later you know you're gonna have to do it again so quit with it
with that. No. Here it is. It's a reason you gotta clean up those bark inclusions really good. So, I don't even know if it's gonna be worth trying to save. What am I gonna do about you? Huh? Because I still have to bring it down here because I don't know where the rest of the pieces is. Man, yeah, just tearing me up. Tearing me up. Man, pretty upset about that. I don't want to bring it down to here. I ain't going to have no good features. Okay, well, let me give it a think. Place. The thing is, is I have nothing for here. Let me go see if I can find the rest of the pieces. I don't know where they went. Let's see if I'm going to glue it back or if I'm going to have to just cut it back. Then I'm going to run into this one over here. Hmm. turn cameras off for a minute. Now I will come back after I give this a think. Let's talk about what just happened there. A um, couple of things. Uh, whenever I cast this, I did not get this cleaned up well. Uh, it still would have held on okay and I don't believe would have ever presented a problem once I got it turned had I not got a catch. I was being a little too aggressive with my tools and had gotten gotten the, the catch and then it just kept you know I wasn't listening to the sounds of what was going on and the feel of the tool so now I've got a decision do I see what I can do to repair it or do I just cut my bowl back to here you know still gonna be a nice size bowl if I cut it back to here um, but I think right now I am going to glue it back on so at least I have that option. I still have some breakage here. I'll have to bring it down a little bit. Um, yeah. So two lessons that I learned and maybe you guys can take from, from my mistakes. Um, making sure if you've got voids like that, that they're that thin layer of bark even you know you may have to get in there with some kind of rotary tool I use just a brass brush and it it just wasn't enough to clean that up I, I haven't have molded several of these and not ever had this problem and like I said if I had not have had the catch and would not have been being so aggressive you know this probably would not have happened would not have had a problem with it breaking away um, but you know anyway so the one thing that I do know is I'm gonna slow down be a little more patient and listen to the sounds I was in the feel I was feeling it kind of chunking out but 
what I was thinking was wood was actually the epoxy that was breaking away and I can't I can't find the other little pieces I'm sure it broke off little by little because I was I was feeling it and hearing it but I thought maybe it was the wood and I thought if I kept kind of shear scraping away at it yeah so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put some CA glue to it and I may end up having to cut it all the way back we'll see but if I don't glue it on now that's my only option so just trying to leave my options open and um, like I said I may end up having to go back that far anyway if I feel like it's not it's not something I can get get fixed and I am going to use the black CA might as well show what I did wrong I am using the medium thick man I just hate that I did that I should just cut my losses but I'm not ready to give up on her yet all right we're gonna get back at this it's been about an hour I wanted to make sure that CA glue had plenty of time to set up. I'm going to go nice and easy with the carbide. See what, what I'm looking at. See if it's going to be salvageable. Alright, let's get her going.
do some wet sanding, guys. Okay, dry out my little beauty. I'm gonna be back up down in the morning. We're gonna put some sanding sealer on her, some Mylan sanding sealer. Such a thirsty wood. She is a beautiful. Alright, let's go on with our Yorkshire Grit original. Good catch. <laughs> I couldn't do that again if I tried. Time to take her up to a shine. Going on with the microfine Yorkshire grit. There we are. We made it off the lathe with another piece all intact. It is a beauty. It is a maple burl. Look at the grain. It's just gorgeous. So much to see. Um, this was supposed to be a color shift on the epoxy and I don't see any different colors it's just all the same color so that's a little bit of a disappointment and I did add two different color shift pigments in there but I don't see it so it is what it is I think the epoxy still turned out nice let me get you up here see if you can see anything 
light is disastrous. Get the light down. There. Maybe you can see some. Not a whole lot of epoxy, and I'm fine with that. We've got it across the bottom here. Uh, just really absolutely love the grain on this, this burl. Spectacular, all the movement in it. It, it is just something. I don't know, kind of pretty. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging in here and watching me. Uh, thanks for subscribing to me. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead, jump down there, push that button, subscribe. It'll help YouTube know that you enjoy watching my videos and that you want to see more of my videos, see what, I'll, what I'm going to make next or what it's going to look like or if I have trouble. Um, also, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys and see what you guys think of my different projects. Even if it's something, you know, you feel like I did wrong, you know, go ahead. Let me know. I can, I can take it, I think. Anyway, uh, you know, share this, share my videos. Those are good ways to get me out there on YouTube, get me moving, get, get more subscribers and that way I can uh, grow my channel and share with more people. So let's go ahead and give a quick little talk about some of the things that I'm happy about on this video or this project. Love the wood, of course, I've already said that. Um, did have this little breakout. I recovered okay from it. Um, there is just enough dark that I think the black went all right with it. It doesn't bother me too bad. I wish I hadn't have broke it out. And, uh, yeah, so those things happen. You know, this isn't, this isn't a perfect world where all you got to do is put something on a lathe and get going and everything works out absolutely perfect. It's sometimes how you recover, and if you can recover. Um, yeah, so I feel like, well, pretty good at recovery. So, again, thanks for stopping by and watching me. You know, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. And don't forget to comment and give me that thumbs up. And you guys take care. And we'll see. Oh, we're going to put her in the, flip, the picture box. So you guys can get better, see better pictures of her. Don't forget to stay for that. That's always fun. And anyway, you guys have a great day. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. She's a beauty. my god, you weren't recording all that time. Uh.